All right, Yeti Nation, we are literally one month away from tarpon fishing or tarpon season starting here on the Nature Coast. You wouldn't know it by what I'm wearing. I'm wearing a Sims jacket, blue jeans, and boots because it's 41 degrees here. I'm envious of you Keys guys that are fishing on, on those tarpon already and it's nice and warm and you're in your board shorts and your flip-flops. But obviously, I've got four more weeks and it better warm up, I can tell you that, because this is ridiculous. What I'm gonna do today is take you into my shop and show you a couple of tips with baits, with leaders, and with the delivery system, spinning delivery system, because we're gonna talk light tackle, how you can catch these fish. And I'm gonna show you right now. So I'm gonna walk on down to the shop. I want you guys to join me. And we're going to show you how to catch those really tough bite tarpon. I mean, when the social media starts heating up and everyone's seeing that they're jumping them in your zone and you can't, I've got a few tricks that are going to help you out. Class YouTube is brought to you by Aquatraction, your go-to solution for advanced marine flooring. You ready to glean? guys here's the deal we're gonna break it up into three three little separate segments one rod and reel requirements two leader requirements for tough bite fishing and three the baits themselves now the baits themselves I want to talk about first because I typically have hard baits that I like and soft baits that I like but when conditions are tough which means they're probably perfect and you've got angling pressure it's a lot easier, for me at least, to fool them with soft plastics. And let's face it, the tarpon group gets smarter and smarter every year. These migrating fish are passing hundreds if not thousands of anglers a day. And they're getting bombed by crabs and pinfish and float rigs and fly fishermen and plug fishermen. I mean, they see it all. So I've become quite the uh, proponent, if you will, of throwing soft baits. Two of the soft bait profiles I like to toss the most at, at Jumpy Tarpon would have to be the six inch Z-Man Darters. This is a fantastic bait here, it really is. Uh, and it has very little action even with that segmented tail when you just pull it through the water and reel it steady. It stays pretty flat like a ballyhoo or a needle fish or a pipe fish something like that and the fish react strongly to it especially in colors like smelt that's very translucent on bright days that is a solid pick most of the time especially early light or on cloudy days i will throw this bait this is the five inch z-man jerk shads on that half ounce redfish eye hook now the redfish eye hook is just a longer shanked hook. In fact, I have some packaging here I'd like to show you guys. But it is a stout hook. And when you're throwing to tarpon, that's what you're gonna need because you're gonna have to hit them and you don't want a hook to straighten out. And this has got quite the gap in it in these baits. So I don't know if you can see that. It's got a nice wide gap there. Really gives you a solid connection that you or your angler can really put some, you know, some horsepower behind when you're fighting the fish and be able to pull them and not worry about it straightening out. Now, I know a lot of you are thinking, so those two profiles, 
what if you do a day when you've got tons of west, you know, on my coast at least, and you've got grass that's kind of gagging these gaps up a little bit. Well, that's why I like the wide gap, so I can snap it clear every once in a while. But if you've got to fish a, more like an extra wide gap hook, that's a rigging hook that the bass guys use or we use uh, for redfish and things like that, well, they make it here at Z-Man. This is a six aught, one sixth of an ounce. Now I can't get the casting distance with this, but I do get the weed free action that I need out of it so that I can get it through the grass uh, that's floating on the surface and it does a good job. And you can look really close. That's another super stout hook. So you can rig these profiles either way, jig head or the chin locks, and it stays on there. Now I glue my baits to the jig head. I use crazy glue. I put a brush it on with a brush applicator behind the head and on the shank. I slide them up and I pre-rig probably about a dozen of each color of these things and put them in plastic bags. Actually, I have the plastic bags right here because I was doing a product info tip. These tackle web bags are great because I'll, I'll pre-rig everything and then I break them down into colors in these bags and it works fantastic. So that's how I like to address the tough bite with the lures themselves. Now, let's talk leader requirements next because that's gonna be a big, a big difference for you and I wanna explain some of my thoughts behind it. All right, let's talk leaders next. For me, if I'm typically plug fishing or plastic soft bait fishing tarpon, I just like to use three to four feet a 50 pound fluorocarbon. That's a fact, it works great. 50 pound is where I like to be because I know I have more time with abrasion resistance because it's a thicker leader to fight a fish if he's got it in his maw somewhere and he's on the leader itself and not on the plug or on the nail of the hook, which is, you know, the metal part of the hook. So three to four. If Let's just say it's a nice day, bright and clear, a little more angling pressure. I'll drop immediately to four to five foot length leaders and I'll tie straight 40 fluorocarbon. 40's a little thinner and longer leaders are gonna put your main line further away, give you, if, you're, if you've got someone who's not the greatest caster, it helps a lot too. But when the fish are going to be tough and you get turned down after turned down negative after negative reaction I'll go to a six foot leader and you're thinking well how in the heck am I gonna get six feet a leader I can't sling that outside the tip top of my rod you're gonna have to reel it in that's right so what you're gonna do and this is with all baits is I put a palomar or a clench knot right to the hook of the bait that's what I do number one you don't need a loop knot to hinge the bait. You want the bait to not have as much action. You want to just have it track straight. So that's going to be that's going to be number one. I have one foot here with a Bristol knot uh, and you can use an Albright, you can use a no name, doesn't matter, to this. So I got 50 pound fluorocarbon in that, that first foot. That's going to give me that abrasion resistance. You could use 40 if it gets that tough. And then I've got five feet of 30 pound mono. And that 30 pound mono is light enough when I attach it to my bimini twist that I'm not gonna have any issues getting it in and out of the guides and slinging it. So six feet a liter. I never go past six feet a liter. And it's easy to determine on the boat because I just hold the line up, I'm six foot five, and when the bait's touching the ground and it's a five foot bait, I know that I just need to cut it off somewhere around the brim of my hat. I've got my six foot a liter and it's perfect. And in tough, tough scenarios when the fish just don't react and I've, I've had 12 or 15 groups pass and it's just like, ah, we got to drop lower. That's what I'm going to do. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Occasionally I'll even, and I'm going to share this bonus tip, instead of this five inch jerk shads, I'll go to a three eighths jig head and put it on a four inch jerk shads. Occasionally I'll do that to help out a little bit more. So those are a couple of bonus tips, but that's it, six foot leader. Now let's talk about the rod and reel that you're gonna have to, well, deliver all this lightweight stuff, a decent cast. And what I mean by a decent cast, 
In the past, I like to set up with an anchor ball and figure out where the line is for the fish to come by. And I just want to be 60 feet away from that. That's it, 20 yards. So that someone with a fly rod can cast to them and someone with a heavy duty spinning rod can cast to them. But in reality, with these plastics and these half ounce lead heads, you can, you can be 90 to 120 feet away from these fish and still, and still have a legit shot of making an accurate cast with a heavier rod. So I'm gonna show you that stuff right after this. All right, let's talk about delivery system. Well, one, you're gonna need an eight foot rod. Now, I personally, in my personal fishing, I use a seven foot rod because it's a casting rod. It's a heavy action casting rod on a 400 Shimano Tranks. But because the largest part of my audience for Flats Class Television and our YouTube channel are spinning rod enthusiasts, and I know most of you guys are, it's gonna be a lot better off that you're throwing this stuff on something that you can not only cast to the fish, but you can fight the fish. And that means you're gonna be using spinning gear. So I'm gonna say, let me turn this around for you. This Saragossa is going to be your deal. This is the 8000 series, the SW8000. I pack it with a very little bit of, of, uh, of backing, but I put 300 yards of 40 on there. Will they ever run 300 yards off? No, they're not gonna run 300 yards off. They might run 150 though. But every day, if we fight a fish on a rod, I pull off two rod links, cut it, and retie everything again because those, that last little distance around the boat gets so worn out and I don't trust it after that. 40 is what I like to throw because it gives me maximum casting distance. If we were gonna be throwing natural baits where we're floating a pinfish, tossing a crab out there in the tide, you could go to 50, it won't matter. But for me, for throwing these artificials that I'm teaching you how to do today, you're gonna to want at least 40. So 40 works good. Now. The rod that I like to use is eight feet long for spinning gear, and it is the Terramar Double X technology. This is a fantastic rod. This is an upgrade from their Terramar. Do not get them confused. This is a more expensive rod. Here's the model number, go check it out. And the specs, I'm gonna leave it there for a second so that you can see it. All right, now, the great thing about this particular rod is it has two uh, patented technologies from Shimano that make it perfect for throwing artificials to tarpon. One is Spiral X. Spiral X is when they wrap this carbon tape around this rod blank when they first get the raw blank in a 45 degree pattern up the blank and then they'll put a sheet of vertical material over the top of it. Then they come the opposite direction with a 45 degree wrap back down the blank, wrap super tight. And what does that do? Well, it allows this, this rod to have some cool things. One is it's very rigid and very powerful, but it's lightweight and they take a lot of the weight out. Two, the, tw the tip cannot twist. You know, I'm trying to twist it as much as I can and it won't want to twist, which means you have a lot of control over the fish next to the boat. You also don't get that tip vibration when you're trying to make a cast. And a lot of lesser rods will do that. They'll go, whoa, 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 whoa. The oil can like that shimmer and your cast will go way off or it'll destroy the distance and accuracy of your cast. So Spiral X is pretty cool that way. High Power X is how this rod resists ovalization. You're like, what kind of word is ovalization? Well, rods, when they're under a lot of pressure, and I, I usually lose a few rods in tarpon season because people are trying to high stick or fight the fish poorly at the side of the boat. This Terramar Double X does not allow ovalization. Ovalization is when your rod used to be round and then it ovalizes when it's under pressure, especially a lot of pressure, and then it snaps. Just like you can imagine squeezing a straw down and snapping it over. This rod will not do that. So when that rod, that fish, that tarpon makes a run under your motor or around the front of the boat, you just stick the rod in there, lift that rod up high like that, and you can pull him and turn him right back around. That's a huge advantage to using the Terramar Double X. That and the ability to cast farther because it stores energy and releases energy better than any of their saltwater rods, period. None of them. 
do it as good as Ter Terramar double X. Uh, so casting accurate, ac casting accuracy and distance and the ability to fight the fish is maximized with this rod. All right, I've given you three reasons why to go after those tarpon, no matter how, how tough they are. Don't give up at noon and go to the sandbar. Go to the sandbar at like five o'clock. Go to the sandbar with your Yeti Ramblers and your coolers. Um, or go, you know, go chase snook or Spanish mackerel, something easier. Stay out there, lightening that leader up, using soft plastics, and then using the right delivery system to be able to put these in front of fish. You're going to jump more tarpon this year. I promise you. It's a flats class guarantee. All right, guys. Go out there. Tarpon season's a month away. And I can't wait to get rid of this dang jacket. <laughs>